Hello, this is Brett, and in this video, we're going to talk about fonts in CSS. So, looking at our Ernie's Sports Deli page, we see that all of our fonts are using default fonts that are chosen by the browser. If we come to ErnieSportsDeli.com, we see that they have fonts that are specific to the style that they want. So, the first thing we're going to do is find out what font they're using, and we'll copy what they have used so ours looks the same. So to begin, I will right click on the phone number here and go to inspect. And then I will find this area down here, which is the div that the phone number is in. And on the right hand side, I can come over and I can see the styles that are applied. And there's a tab called computed that will take all of the styles and it will show me which styles have been computed to form that element or the style of that element. So coming down to font family, you can see here that I have Century Gothic, Century Gothic, again, Apple Gothic, and Sans Serif. So I'm simply going to highlight this, right click and hit copy, and then come into our CSS, and in the body uh, attribute here, in the body selector, I'm going to say font-family, colon, and then I'll paste that value in and hit save using command S. So if I look at the code here, this is saying we want to use the Century Gothic font, and because there's a space in Century Gothic, it uses the quotes. Then the fallback, if it can't find that font, is Century Gothic without uh, space. Then if that can't find that font, we're going to look at Apple Gothic, and then if it can't find any of those three fonts, we're going to simply look, use any sans serif font. So I've saved that file, I'll come back to my local copy of the Ernie Sports Deli page and refresh. And you'll see that it's changed all of the fonts on the page to be this Century Gothic style. So it changed all of them because everything is contained within the body tag in our HTML, which is here. Everything in here got applied that style. So the next thing I want to do is look at the font size. And if I right click and hit inspect again, I, I can come down to the computed tab and I'll see font size is 24 pixels. And so now if I come into the body and I set font size 24 pixels and I save it and refresh it, everything is going to be 24 pixels and that's not what I want. I only want the content in this top bar to be 24 pixels. So I'll take this font size style here, I'm going to cut it, and then I'll come down into my top bar class selector, and I'll paste that in there. So it's only going to apply the font size to everything that's in the class top bar, which if I double check in my HTML is right here, which is basically the telephone number and the address. So coming back to style.css, I'll save that using command S refresh, you'll see that the top bar styles uh, stay the same with the 24 pixel font. Everything else gets a little bit smaller. So that's exactly what I want. So the top bar looks good. Now I'm going to come to the menu, inspect the element there on the home button, and see that that font size is 16 pixels. So I'll come down to nav, change the font size to 16 pixels, save it, refresh, and if we inspect that element, this, and then click computed, you'll see that our font size is now 16 pixels. So perfect. Now coming down the page a little bit more, seeing what other fonts are there, we have our H1 tag here, which says home. So by right clicking and inspecting that element, I'll come to the computed tab and it looks like this font is a little bit different font face so I'll check the font uh, family first and you'll see that that is not century gothic but it's graduate. So uh, you can see here we have an h1 tag right down here called home but in our styles we don't have an h1 tag yet so I'll create a new uh, selector here for H1 
and then I'll tell that the font family is graduate. Save that, refresh, and you'll see that the font didn't change. And that's because our computer doesn't have the graduate font on it. So there's a couple options that we have. Uh, the, probably the most common way is to come to Google and use the, the Google Fonts API. So you type in Google Fonts graduate, because that's the font we want. And you can see that's the top option here in the search. And they have this font here. So I select this font on Google Fonts API and then clicking at the bottom to the family selected, it will show you the HTML that you can enter that will reference that font. So if I uh, highlight that, I right click and hit copy, I can come over to my HTML and I can paste that in. And so what this is saying is I want to link to this location, which is fonts.googleapis.com forward slash CSS and it's going to download the graduate font. And for style consistency, I will move this rel over here so everything looks nice and in line. So if I save that, and I come back to my page and I refresh, now I see that I have that graduate font. And that looks pretty good. So the next thing is I need to make it size 30 pixels because that's what their site has. So coming back into my H1 style here, I'll say font size colon 30 pixels, save that, refresh, and now I have home 30 pixels. So that looks good. Now I'm gonna to come to the footer. I'm gonna inspect that, and we'll see that the font size there is 16 pixels. I'm also going to inspect some of these other elements to see what size they are. So the menu here looks like it's 12 pixels. The address here looks like it's 16 pixels. The bottom tag down here looks like that's 16 pixels. So one thing that's interesting here is that the, the navigation menu is 16 pixels. This footer uh, phone number is 16 pixels. This is 16 pixels, this is 16 pixels. So rather than put font size 16 pixels in a lot of different places, I'm gonna say that the standard size up in the body is 16 pixels. That will make everything 16 pixels. And then everything that I give more specificity to, like the H1 tag, I've said 30 pixels, it will use that font size rather than the one that's inherited because it's a more specific uh, style on that element. So save that, refresh, and you'll see that all of this is 16 pixels now, but our H1 at home is still big, the 30 pixels, and our top bar is still the custom size that we saw. So the last thing we need to do on, at least on font sizes for the footer, is the font size right here in this UL, and that was font size 12, if you remember, right in the middle here. Under computed, font size 12 pixels. So in CSS, I'll come down to the nav li, which, no, no, it's not that one. It's the footer UL is what I want, footer UL here. Now, I can't put it right under here because it'll also apply to contact info and address info. So I'm going to just do a new selector for footer UL and then say font size 12 pixels. Save that, refresh, and now I have this down here that's nice and small. So that's looking pretty good. Now there's a few things I missed. One is uh, home of the champ here looks like this. So I need to edit some things. So looking at the HTML, you can see that home of the champ is inside of this slogan div, and there's a first span which says home of the, and then champ is a second uh, span. And the reason I had done that before, if you remember, is because 
home of the is one size and champ is a different size. So coming into our style here, I'm going to go down to slogan and you can see that I have a shared style here. So I want to change this or add to this, I should say. And I'm going to do the, sl the slogan div selector and selecting it by class. And I'm going to say the font family is, and let's go in and look what the font family is. And that one's graduate. So I've already referenced that in the HTML. So if I type in graduate and save, that will oops, refresh and give me the graduate font. So that looks good. The next thing is I need to look at home of the, and that's 25 pixels as far as a font size. So I'll come down and say font size is 25 pixels. Save that. Refresh. That looks good. And now the champ is 48 pixels. So if I do slogan span plus span, that will do the second span selector. It will go in and it will select this span specifically. And I'll say font size 48 pixels. Oops, 48 pixels. Save that. Refresh, that looks good. Home of the champ. Now one thing they have different is that home of the is on one line and champ is on another line. So I want you to pause the video just for a second and think about how you would do that. And then resume the video and see if my solution is the same as yours. So welcome back. Hopefully you thought through that. Now one thing you could do is put a break in there. And maybe that's what you thought of. But I like to think about it a little bit differently and see how this element, if I inspect it, actually, let me go to our version. If I inspect this, the span is an inline element. And this other span is an inline element, so they're lining them up together. So I can simply come and change this to a block level element, and it will take up the full row, and it will push the champ down to the next row. So if I come into uh, my CSS and I type dot slogan and I know reference the spans that are inside of slogan and say display block colon refresh now I get home of the champ and by inspecting the element to look at the box model you can see that that takes up the full width of the container that it's in and this one takes up the full width of the container and it is in as well now lastly, they've, uh, as far as home of the champ, they've centered it. So in slogan div, I can say text align colon center, save that, refresh, and it has centered it. So you'll notice that I go to the inspect tool a lot because I like to see what's happening with the boxes. And I use this all the time to see, okay, what's the container that it's in? what's the outer container that it's in, and start exploring around how the boxes are actually working. So home of the, the champ is looking pretty good. Well, there's one thing I noticed differently is that this has a white font face with a black like shadow border, and ours is just black. So let's start changing that. So in slogan, I just want to change the color of the text to white. Refresh, that looks good. Now I need to figure out how they're doing their border. So using our inspect element, we're gonna come down to their styles and we'll see that they're using this text shadow style. So I'm just gonna copy what they have actually and paste that in there. And you can look this up on W3Schools how this works. This is just using multiple shadows to give them the style. Um, so you can see their text shadow. So just using the same style that they have, I'll save that, refresh, and that's looking pretty good. Now, la let's see, let's see if I can do one last thing to make it lo look a little bit better. Um, okay, we'll save that for the next lesson. So home of the champ. All right, so comparing our fonts now to the fonts of this size, we have a little bit of work to go. Uh, looking here specifically in the nav menu, you can say, see that all of their fonts are uppercase. 
and R's are just regular. So one way of doing this would be to come into our HTML and just change it to uppercase and hit save. And you could see if we did that for all of them, it would be uppercase. Or there's a different way you can do this using CSS. So I'll come to the nav selector here and I'll say inside the nav selector, I want to do a text dash transform and I want to make everything uppercase. So save that, refresh, and now everything's uppercase. That looks good. So that's coming along. Now I'm going to, I like to reset and look at the top and then go back down and make another pass. So you can tell that my style is going through making a pass, um, getting all the way to the bottom and then making another pass with the thing that I'm working on. So one thing I notice here is that this color is blue and their color is gray here. Now a difference between our two sites is they don't have a hyperlink for their phone number and we do. And that is why uh, ours is blue with an underline. It's doing that style by default and theirs does not. So there's a few ways to, uh, to fix this. One thing I could do is look at the other hyperlinks on the page, like our address here, uh, these hyperlinks right here. See how they're all underlined and none of theirs are underlined, except for down here they're underlined. So I can do a global style and say all of the A tags, I want the cursor, oops, I want the So I can come into a global style and say all of my A tags, I want the uh, color to be, and let's just copy the color that they have here. So I'm going to right click inspect and then go to computed and then come and look at color. And they're doing this 555 color here. So I'll just paste that in. Save that. Uh, see that that looks good. And you'll notice I usually make a change, save it, and then refresh it rather than make a whole bunch of changes and then go see if they all work. Just make a change, save it, go see if it works. So then the next one that I will use is called text decoration. And I'll say no text decoration, and this is going to remove all the underlines. So I'll refresh that and you'll see that none of these are underlined anymore. Okay, so that looks good. So inspecting that, we have the color 555. Now this looks like the nav menu color is actually a little bit different. So I'll inspect that element, go to computed, and then color. And they're using color 8888 for that color. So I'll come and use that in our nav specifically and say inside the nav, the color is going to be uh, 888-888. Save that, refresh, and now we have that little bit grayer, lighter gray color. Now coming down here, let's, let's check a couple more places. It looks like everything down here is this, uh, this 555 color, so let's double check. Yep, looks like it is. We'll come down to ours, and it looks like we have a little bit of a problem here because our computed color on this one is black. So, one thing that I can do is uh, look at why that's happening. And it looks like the reason is because our A tag we're setting the color on the A, but we're not setting the color on everything. So I will come down to my footer and I'll say that the color for all the items in the footer is that 555555. Refresh that and now we're looking good. Great, so now we have our font sizes are looking right. This is matching with this. The layout's still a little bit off, but the fonts are looking good. The fonts in the nav are looking good. This one is looking correct. 
Uh, these are looking right as well. Uh, one thing you'll notice here is we, because we turned off the A tags, let me go show you. Because we turned the text decoration off on all of the A tags, we don't have underlines here, and they do. So we can make that change by coming down to the footer, and we want to specifically target the footer UL. Um, footer UL and then all the A tags in there and say that the text decoration is underline. Save that. Refresh and now we have underline just like they have. So I'll uh, end there as far as fonts. Just in summary we talked about font family, font size, uh, color of the fonts or of our text and we talked about text decorations and that's pretty much it. So do that to your page and go to the next video. Thanks.